It's going to be a big one tonight, Mom. I can tell you that. How's everybody doing tonight? <laughs> we got a great show for you, too. Emeril Lagasse here. Hope you're all in the mood for French cuisine tonight. Yeah. French cuisine. Yeah, actually, the inspiration for my show tonight comes from the oldest city in France, Marseille. Marseille, France. You say Marseille. Marseille is a wonderful port town in the south of France, and it's known for its wonderful fish and shellfish dishes. I thought we'd start out with the classic one, La Bouride. It's sort of bouillabaisse kicked up 25 notches, if you will, you know? Oh, yeah, man. And then some escargots, La Provence, we're going to do. And for dessert, an incredible apricot clafouti. Clafouti. Say that, like... 15 times. <laughs> I was actually coming on over here on the subway, and the guy next to me was Flutie. He was just... <laughs> Anyhow, pack your bags, everybody. Get ready. We're taking a little trip to Marseille, France, right here on Emerald Live. <laughs> get started here with Marseille, France. Y'all give it up for Doc Gibbs and Cliff, everybody. Hi, sweetie. How you doing? You like French food? My kind of girl. You can stay right there. I got a little snack for you later. You know, when you really look at um, the food of Marseille, and we always try to do this right in the beginning of the show. You know, it's the oldest city in France. It's older than Paris. Second largest city in, uh, in France. And, you know, being very, very close to Provence, the food of Provence, it makes me crazy at least. I mean, it is just some good. But the thing is, is with Marseille, they've also got the wonderful gifts of the ocean, sardines, mullet. You know, there's a specialty that they do with mullet. You ever eaten mullet before? I don't think so. Meet my little friend. <laughs> they actually take the roe. We have a lot of these in the Gulf, and we don't know what to do with them. But, and actually, in Marseille, what they do is they take the roe of the mullet, and they pulverize it with olive oil, and it's sort of like their caviar that they do on bread. Not that we're going to do any of that today. Don't be making any more fish faces over there. <laughs> Cockles and mussels and oysters and scallops. Of course, escargos is a very, very big... They do a lot of different dishes there. And then the produce. They have wonderful produce as well. They use a lot of fennel. We're going to use some when I show you this, this buried, which is just delicious. And uh, different olives that they have, both the provincial type, the Niçois type olives. One of my favorite little things that they do a lot with is they use a lot of this stuff right here. It's, it's orange flower water. And they use it uh, in some of their cooking. They use it also in some of their cocktails. You know, <laughs> eggplant, tomatoes, garlic. And then beautiful fruits. I mean, not only the incredible artichokes that they do, a lot of leeks. We're also going to use some of that in La Buride. But beautiful apricots. You all like apricots? Yeah, yeah. Where do you see this dessert that we're going to do? And, of course, the same can uh, dessert can be done classically with their beautiful cherries as well. Fragrant a lot of fresh herbs. So when we come back, I'm going to show you 
Everybody here, you guys at home, how are we going to start this classic La Buride? And then we're going to rock out with Doc Gibbs. Stick around. We'll be right back. Give it up, Doc. and Cliff, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back. Emeril Lagasse here. If you're just joining us, we're doing a little French-inspired cuisine from Marseille. You guys remember now the oldest city, right? Second largest city. All right, so you learned something. I just learned something, as a matter of fact, that I heard a little rumor that there were quite a few students here from the Hackensack High School. Is that, is that really true? <laughs> that is true, then. I love Hackensack. I was, there, I was there not long ago and had a great experience there. I really did. I hope that you have one here, too. Welcome. I'm going to start with some good olive oil in a little small stock pot like this because the first thing of making this great, it's like a fish stew. It's called buried. You know, relax is you got to make the buried base. Here's how you do that. We're going to start with a little olive oil in this. Good olive oil. Some onion. A little bit of celery. Wow, three ingredients. Like building a new car. I don't know where you're getting your garlic these days, but where I'm getting mine, there's some sort of reactor somewhere, you know what I mean? <laughs> Can you imagine? I love that. It's like chips and dip. <laughs> couple of cloves of garlic in there. And then what we're gonna do is add a couple of peppercorns, some fresh thyme. That's what this is here, fresh thyme. Generally, when you're working with uh, a stem herb like this, if you generally strip the herb, see like how I'm doing like that? You'll immediately begin starting getting all of the perfume and the aromas of that. And then fresh bay leaves from the laurel tree. We'll add a few of those in there. Now, what am I actually making? I'm sort of making what they say in Marseille, this buried base. But basically, what we would say is we're making really a fish stock. That's what we're making, the basis of this fish stew, if you will. We're going to season this with a little bit of salt. And then fish bones. Get them all your fishmonger all over the store. I mean, they generally throw this stuff out. I mean, what do they do with all this stuff? Ask them for it. Probably really dirt cheap. And then you fishermen or fishing woman out there, when you get them like this, you just kind of put them in one of them zip bags, put them in the freezer. And when you're ready to make a little stock for a great little stew, fish stew, we'll put the fish bones in there now. Yeah. Now, I'm going to cover this H2O. That would be water. <laughs> if you want it spicy, you can add it spicy. Now, I had an email, you know, that www.foodnetwork.com thing. And they asked me why, with classic fish stocks, because we're doing French cooking, do they not add lemon, lemon juice in here? Most fish stocks, they put lemon juice in here. They, they don't do that. It's very, very clean. You're going to bring this up to a boil, and you're going to simmer this for 30 minutes. Okay? Now, at that point, we have a fish stock, or the buried base, since we're cooking in Marseille. Now we're ready to start the buried, the dish itself. After this cooks 30 minutes, let it cool a little bit, you strain it through a strainer, a chinois, china cap. This is what you have. This is what this is right here. 
just good old fish stock, okay? Now we're ready to start on the classic Marseille dish. They use leeks. They julienne the leeks. That's these guys here. Well, most people, a lot of people don't know. I'm probably ruining the whole boat here. That's what these are here, leeks. Okay? It's in that onion family. <laughs> that would be onion. <laughs> so we julienne them. We're going to start with some leeks. And then, interesting enough, orange peel. But not the white, just the zest, the peel itself. Gives this wonderful fish stock, this wonderful flavor. Okay? We'll add it all. Tomato. Going to add some tomato in there. See, in New Orleans, or I should say in Acadiana, they would call this, which is also French-inspired, they'd call this a coubillon. In Marseille, they call it buried. The juice of that orange, we're going to add that in there. So now you've got this wonderful orange flavor. Remember I was telling you about that orange water earlier that they use a lot? Fresh parsley. And then, even in Marseille, 60 cloves of garlic chopped up in there. So now you bring this up. You bring this up to a little simmer. Why? Because you want to extract the flavors out of that, make it happy. I mean, you got the fish stock or the bereed base. It's pretty happy. When we just added all those ingredients, it's going to be really happy. So about eight minutes is all it takes, OK? Eight minutes. At that point, while we're getting the stock, the bereed, you can go on all these, all the roadside places, all these places on the cliffs, they have this. This is the dish in Marseille. Now, what we're going to do now, we're going to get our fish fillets. Voila! <laughs> now, they're happy, but they're not fully happy because they're not seasoned. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to season this side with a little salt, a little pepper. Then we're going to use this side here, a little salt. See, this kind of quantity you can really practice. Bam, bam, bam. You know, at least I do. Keep in shape that way, you know. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to start layering the fish inside of our bereed base. While I'm doing that, that would be a good time for you to go get, oh, one of those frozen things. When I come back, Ioli, Rui, Berade, Doc Gibbs, and Cliff in the house. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Doc Gibbs and Cliff in the house. <laughs> Just joining us, we're making the uh, classic bereed. And what we're doing now, you can see, you don't want to uh, have this thing boiling, you know, like crazy. You break up all the fish. You just want to let it simmer. It's a food of love thing, OK? If you're unsure that your fillets are getting the proper liquid on this. You can always get a little ladle like this and just ladle some of that on the fish fillets. Smells good, huh? All right, now, I'm going to let that simmer. That's going to take about 
eight minutes realistic time here. So uh, snapper, mullet, uh, any kind of firm fish. You got to be careful with like filet of sole because it tends to break up. It is delicious in it. But really, you know, in Marseille, they usually get whatever they bring in, uh, you know, from, from the fishermen, whatever. Uh, and they usually, uh, a lot of times, will also do it whole. They, they won't fillet it, some of the smaller fish. One of the things that you need for this dish is great French bread with great croutons, like I have right here, sort of on a bias like this. And then a couple of things that they also do that's imp really important to this dish is they have an aioli, which is basically a mayonnaise, okay? A garlic mayonnaise that they mortar the garlic into it and then make with olive oil, good olive oil and an egg and emulsion, they make an aioli. That's exactly what this is here. The color of what you see, how bright yellow this is, is not because it has mustard, it's because of the garlic and it's because of the good provincial olive oil, French olive oil. Now, they take that and then what they do is they'll mortar with a pestle more garlic and hot peppers or chili peppers. They'll seed them. Sometimes they'll roast them, sometimes not. They'll mortar them. They'll actually fold in those hot peppers into the garlic mayonnaise and then it's this is the, what they make out of that. It's called rui. So you have aioli and you have rui, which is basically a pepper mayonnaise flavored with garlic, of course. Okay? Now, what do they do to put this burid, the classic burid, together? I'm going to show you. First thing is this. We're going to take when the fish is cooked, we're going to begin to start taking some of those fillets of the fish out of the stock. I love when it happens. Okay? I'm going to start taking some of that fish. Now, you know we were talking. Oh, you're really playing with my emotions. <laughs> You know, we were talking earlier about in, uh, in New Orleans, you know, we would use, you ask about fish. We would generally uh, use a, a trout or we would use redfish or a red snapper. This particular fish that I use today here was a red snapper. I use a lot of that mullet as well. Okay, so we take the fish out. Now, because you don't want it to all fall apart. We're not trying to make fish sticks, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's, that's the other show. <laughs> now, I'm simmering the heat for a reason, because I'm going to show you how we finish this. How we finish this is very simple. I take egg yolks and some of that aioli, that garlic mayonnaise. This is how they finish it. I mean, how could you go wrong, right? and whisk this together. Sometimes what they'll also do is add a little bit of wine to this. Oh, I see the California wine clubs here. All right, ladies, if you get that excited, we'll add a little wine in there. Now, here's what they'll do. They'll take a little bit of this stock. Yeah, I, there's, sometimes they strain it. You're right about that. Sometimes it's just the stock. They leave the vegetables. But this is what they do. What they do is they slowly temper this mixture a little at a time, like I'm doing, slowly. Why? Because you don't want to have scrambled eggs. This is tempering music by Doc Gibbs. Okay, so once you got all the egg mixture in there and it's going to be tempered, I'm going to be a little 
a little safe, and I'm also going to do it the reverse way. You want to make sure, because this we're relying on this hot stock here to temper. reason why I say sometimes they strain it, sometimes they don't, is because now what we're going to do is we're going to go back into this mixture here for the final bereed. See that? Got this one wonderful flavor, and now what the eggs have done is given it also this wonderful texture. Now it's simple. Here's how you do it now. Really simple. Let's talk about a little bit of that. They'll always serve the aioli and the rui also on the side. They take a little bit of crouton like this. One or two pieces of that beautiful fish right on top of that. You see? Then what they'll do is they'll take a little bit of that nice, that bereed, right over this now. Cooking with gas, as they say. Cooking with gas. Now, they'll garnish this with sometimes with a little bit of chive or herb. They'll sometimes garnish it with a lot of fresh pepper and bring it to the table, the classic burrito as such. Then it's up to you at the table to decide whether you want to add a little more aioli on this A little Rui on this more, right? A little Rui. Bam! There you have it. That's simple. All right, ladies. Hey, guys, when we come back, another knot. Stick around. That was Doc Gibbs and Cliff, everybody. So what do you think? It's incredible. There's a lot of flavors going on in there. A lot of flavors, subtle. But it's, it's pretty subtle. Uh, you guys got some over there? What do you, what do you, what do you think of that, the bread? I like it. it. A lot of flavors. You know, that mm -hmm. Rui with the pepper mm -hmm. kind of gives it a little shot, you know, to kind of pick up the flavors a little bit, or as I say, kick it up a notch. Mm -hmm. yep. A little aioli and a uh, nice dish. Something I um, found earlier, as I said to you guys, that uh, part of Marseille has got a lot of uh, provincial Provence, a lot of influences in there. And uh, two main ingredients of that in Marseille are, uh, one is the wine. About 60% of the wine grown in this region is actually rosé. I mean, real rosé. Not like those impasta rosés that... No, because really, here in America, we, rosé is, people have a different understanding of real rosé. Now, you order a great bottle of provincial wine that's rosé, which is mostly the Grenache grape in Provence, and you've got something magical that they chill it real well, and it goes with these types of fish stews, and whether it's with cockles or mussels, really delicious wine. It's nothing like uh, what we we're raised up on a sort of, you know, blush wine or whatever. I don't know what that means, blush wine. The only thing I, I know what it means is that when you drink it, you get blush, you know? <laughs> you know, it's like 40% alcohol, you know, uh, we won't go there, anyhow. So, the other great ingredient beside their great wine, their rosé wines, are escargos or snails. And um, they're making a comeback again here in the States. They used to be very popular in the 60s and 70s with the Chicago Bourguignon. And then we kind of 
lost them for a while. Nowadays, it's terrific because there are a lot of farm raising going on of snails in this country. The, the type is called petit gras. These are the general sizes. A lot of these farms, they'll send you the shells. You can get them uh, where they actually will uh, harvest them and freeze pack them like that for you, which is fine. As, as long as you can try to stay as much as you can away from the, the canned ones, you know, like, you know what I'm talking about. I can't even go there right now. <laughs> Have an Oreo or something, you know. <laughs> these are farm raised here in the States, these petty gras snails, okay? And they're cleaned, and I know, you know, there's a lot of, um, during serious uh, times of the year, certain times of the year is what I meant to say, there's like bans on when they'll sell these or not. You know, they basically eat, you know, like lettuce and like grass and stuff, you know, they're, one of those land things. <laughs> I like them. Let me show you how you kick them up a few notches. Get them excited, all right? Good olive oil. Watch this. Good olive oil, and you do some shallots real quick and about 40 cloves of garlic. Now look. You don't want to burn this. You don't want to burn it. So that's right away. You want to take it off the stove. And then that word that I just did there is called deglaze. My brain feels like that every morning. Deglazed. You want to deglaze it to stop the cooking time. Okay? You don't want to burn the garlic. It's going to get bitter. You don't want to burn the shallots. After that, it's pretty simple. Here's what we're going to do. I've got some breadcrumbs in here. A lot of fresh parsley in Marseille that they use with these breadcrumbs. And again, really good olive oil. And they'll take it and, and just sort of moisten these crumbs like this so that there's enough olive oil that the crumbs have soaked up with this parsley. You with me so far? Okay. Now, while these wine is reducing down, we just add the snails in there. Make them happy. Now don't try this at home, but now, now what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of fresh parsley in here, a little bit of salt so that they taste good. Multiple bands. Multiple bam day. <laughs> so this has got to be a little more moist for me with the crumbs, with that good provincial olive oil. Now, you can see there's not a lot of moisture left. Now, generally, what they'll do, so we got the crumbs. We've got some aioli. We've got some snails, right? They're looking good. We're going to kick them up another notch. Big notch. What was that movie when uh, Tom Cruise was, you know? Yeah, well, no, he was shooting that, you know. Yeah, what was that thing, that mamushka or something, right? He had that, yeah, well, this is my manushka or whatever. All right. It's happy, I can see it from here. You know what, I can even make them a little happier if you want. To finish them off, you could use a little bit of butter like this, you know? No, just a little bit, just, you know. Yeah, that's like wimpy butter. trying to help the dairy farmers out in America. They're some awesome people. Hey, my friend Julia Child, she uses a lot of butter. All right, watch what we're going to do. We're going to watch what this butter does. It sort of is going to cream these up a little bit. I love that. Yeah, I'm all creamed up. All right, now, we'll turn the heat off. Put the butter back. 
a new song, Doc, sorry. <laughs> let me show you what you do with these guys. You want to talk about fantastic. Check this out. You let these cool. <laughs> and what you do, you take a snail and you put them in these. These are like their own homes. <laughs> this is like their own motor homes right here. These. You see that? I'm going to just show you one, and then I'm going to do a bunch of them. Then what you do is you get some of this juice that we had, right? Watch this. With the shallots and the garlic. Oh, my. Oh. It works for me. All right, look. Here's what you do. You take the aioli, and you put some aioli like this. Garlic mayonnaise, you know what I'm saying? And then you take some of these olive oil breadcrumbs. I mean, come on, right? What are those other late night shows eating? You know what I mean? I don't understand it. You blast it in the oven for about two minutes when we come back. When we come back, I'm going to show you how these look like. And then it's going to be this incredible fresh apricot graffiti. Stick around. Welcome back. Doc Gibbs and Cliff, everybody. You want to be very careful when uh, I tell you to blast, as I said, for about two minutes. The breadcrumbs with the oil, you know, they cook, like, fast. I actually had uh, our oven here, which is, you know, kicked up. We had it in the broil mode. And I'm telling you, in two minutes, it's all it's going to take. You get this wonderful little glossage like this. You can see the flakes of the, of the uh, parsley in there like that. Here's what I like to serve them. You take one of these here on a little plate. I like to take a little bit of that good provincial olive oil again. Just a little bit. You kind of do this little drizzle. You see? That's if you like olive oil. You know. I like olive oil. A little bit more parsley you could use. Okay? Let's show you that again. Take one of these here. The other thing that I like to do is I like to serve this, but this is just me. I like to serve it with a couple of pieces of crusty bread like this. Because I don't know about you, but I want to go inside of them holes when I get the, uh, you know, when the snails come out. All right. Ladies, can always make friends. All right, now, before I move on to this, uh, the next boat, which is the dessert pot, this kaflutti which I'm going to uh, explain to you. All right, where's my friend here who loves the snails? Come on over here, baby. Come on, don't worry. It's only like 50 million people. Get you a couple of forks. You're welcome. A couple of forks. I hope you enjoy them. Now, these are the petit, petit gras snails. That's the CA. These are the small ones like this. The big monsters like this too, you know? There's a little stripe. Those are helix like that. They're big. 
Sometimes they use these shells right here and they just pack them in with garlic butter. Put the snails in there. Now, clafuti. Classically, it's done a lot with cherries. I love cherries. But also, when the apricots are really in bloom in Marseille, they do them. And watch how, watch how simple this is. First, I'm going to make the batter. Four eggs, right? I'm going to add to those four eggs lavender honey. <laughs> lavender honey is just that. It's real honey from this part of France that they flavor with lavender. Another thing I really love. You know, you ever see it when it's all in bloom along the highways? It's gorgeous. And you can buy it like this too. Lavender honey, fantastic. It's got that really smell. So we got lavender honey and eggs. We got some milk. Now we're going to add some flour to make the batter. Okay. Inside of this earthware dish, I buttered it really good. Now, when the batter gets all nice, nice like this, I'm going to add a little bit of butter to that. Just kicks up the flavor a little bit, you know what I mean? And speaking about kicking up the flavor, vanilla bean. When you use a vanilla bean, what you do is you split it in half like this, okay? Because what it is, is the vanilla is inside of this pod. You got to scrape it out, you see? There's where the vanilla is. We're going to add some fresh vanilla to that. Oh, yeah, babe. We're going to add some fresh vanilla to that. And then another notch. We're going to add a little cognac to this. All right, look. I'm going to cut our apricots up, slice them like this. I'm going to put the apricots like this. I'm going to cut up a few more. Then I'm going to pour this batter that we're going to mix nice and smooth over the apricots, 375 degrees, 350, 375, for about 45 minutes. When we come back, I'm going to show you how to finish this clafuti. Stick around! Back in. Cliff, everybody. Yeah. Now, you can do these clafoutis, as I say in Marseille, apricots, cherries, but let me tell you something, you can do them with apples, you can do them with pears, you can do them with whatever kind of fruits that you want, strawberries, you can do them with peaches. If you're in the apricot program, people are intimidated about these. Look, you just cut it right out, generally the pit will fall right out when they're ripe. When they're firm, Hey, and they don't fall out, it's because it's not meant to fall right out. It's not ripe. Let it sit for a day or two. Use another fruit. Slice them up just like that. Now, the other thing is, most clafuti batters that you're going to find, they'll be a little thicker than this. That's because we've got that lavender honey in there. You pour that batter right over this, as I said. You got that vanilla, you see that? Smell that? Playing with your emotions. 350, 375 in the oven, about 45 minutes. Now, when it's done, you want to talk about incredible. Look at this. You let it sit like this for a little bit. You see this? Don't cook it, don't cook it till like it evaporates. Now, here's how I like to finish my clafuti. I take a little spoon like this of that clafuti. You see that? Then what I do, I like to take a little bit of vanilla ice cream. Right? Put a little vanilla ice cream on there like that. Then what I like to do is a little bit of a few almonds like this. And then you just kind of ba-bam! Just kind of ba-bam! Like that, you know what I mean? Ba-bam! How's that 
for Kabuti, right? All right, instant replay if you miss it. You take that clafuti thing just like this in the center, all right? Take a little bit of that vanilla ice cream. Put that like right in the center, right? One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. That's how simple it is, okay? Hey, I'm Emeril Lagasse. It was a real pleasure doing Marseille France tonight. See you tomorrow, everybody!